It is so cool to talk to you today. Uh, you know, from Runaways, obviously Smallville, Caprica, Torchwood, Hawaii Five O, uh, but you know, Buffy. Uh, you know, I I grew up on a bit of Buffy, so it, it's it's an amazing show that is the, the themes have stuck around. I'd say. Do you do you hear fans talking about that today? Oh uh, yeah, you know, I think I think the central theme of the show is don't give up. You know, I mean it's really it was written about a time of life where, you know, adolescence where a person is old enough to recognize that the world is messed up. You know, their 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 parents aren't always right and and your teachers don't necessarily know what they're talking about all the time. And the wider world is just, you know, uh, not not perfect at all. And what do you do? What does a human being do when they realize that? Do you give up or do you not? And there's been a lot of great literature about that. Hamlet's about it. Catcher in the Rye is about that. Um, and 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 Buffy, what I love about Buffy is it tackles that theme, but it it it. Uh, it targets the audience target is people who are that age. Uh, and so I, I think it's, it's made well enough that it, it uh, is appreciated by people of all ages. But what I really appreciate is the main target was people who are at that point in their lives and try to give them something to say, Hey man, try to make it better. If you can try not to give up, uh, try to be like Buffy. It's hard. It hurts sometimes, but it's worth it. Uh, and uh, yeah, people talk about that a lot. They, they, they talk about times in their life when it was tempting to give up or when they needed help not to give up. And Buffy gave that to them. And I hear that fairly, cons well, constantly uh, when I'm meeting with fans. Uh, and it just, it makes me really, really happy. <laughs> well, and I love the fact that, you know, before there was a Loki, <laughs> there was Spike on Buffy. Like he he feels to me like the original trickster on TV, uh, especially from from that era. I mean, uh, there's a few I can think of. I think of Q. I think of you know obviously Loki now. But mm -hmm. Spike was was you know right up there. Do you was that fun to play? Obviously because he went through so many transitions through the show. Yeah, yeah. You know that. That was my favorite part of playing the role is, is the person who would say, Buffy, you're stupid. We're all going to die. That, that was just fabulous. You know, um, I, I am a subversive artist by nature. I used to uh, produce uh, subversive theater in Chicago and Seattle. I thought I had to give that up when I came down to Los Angeles uh, because I became a father and I had to try to actually make money. Uh, and I thought, I would, you know, you're joining the commercial beast. You're never going to be able to do that. Uh, and I got on a show that was actually subverting the lie that women can't fight back. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe my luck. And then within that show, I got to be the subversive character to tell everybody they're stupid. <laughs> it was like, I think you can see on camera how much fun I was having. Uh, because like, you know, the, the Hollywood, uh, has, the tradition in Hollywood is that you treat the lead like a like like royalty. Oh, Sarah. Oh, David. Here, come sit here. Have a cup of tea. What can I massage your feet? You know, and they're both great, and they're workhorses, and they always show up on time. They always know their lines. They're really cool to work with. But that's the that's the culture, and I just loved once action was called. I was like, oh hi, now I'm gonna get you. You know, uh, uh, so so uh, I I couldn't I I can't believe my luck, man. It was so fun. What's it like now meeting with fans who have not just come come through for Spike still, but but all of the shows that you've been on and all of these iconic roles and and sometimes villains. Uh, what what's that interaction like? What what are fans coming to you about? You know, they, they, just, they just want to talk about whatever whatever I was working on that they were watching. Uh, and the great thing is, is like I'm a fanboy. You know, I was I was going to Star Trek conventions dressed as Spock when I was 13 years old. Not a very good cosplay, but I did my best. Um, and and so I'm kind of in my element at a convention and I love the shows that I've worked on. Uh, so it's very fun to talk about them. Uh, there are actors that get on a show that's, it's just not their cup of tea and that's okay. Uh, and, and then if they have to talk about that show, 
for years afterwards. I, I don't think it'd be that easy to have fun uh, as I have. Um, but yeah, I love all the, or let's talk about, you know, have you seen uh, Bad Batch? You know, the new Disney animated about Clone Warriors. I'm like, oh, I love that. You know, like, so I'm watching the same stuff they are uh, and we can connect really easily. And I mean, you've done Fan Expo before, but you're coming here for, or you're, I, maybe you're here. I'm not sure if you're here yet or not, but, you know. I'm at an just... undisclosed location. <laughs> <laughs> What is Toronto different at all? Because I know you've come before for Fan Expo. Uh, the, well, yeah, what, what it was in the past yeah. and what it is now. What is it different here? I have I have been to Toronto many times. I've filmed here. I've uh, done music here. I've done conventions here. Toronto is like the, 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 the city that Chicago wishes that it was. You know, but it's fooling itself. <laughs> Toronto is amazing. It's like it's like Vancouver is the city that, that Seattle is trying to be and not quite there yet. Uh, <laughs> I love, yeah, I love Canada. Uh, I I keep thinking, do I have to leave? Like this, like when 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 I travel abroad to to Europe and stuff, people often say, "Hey, are you Canadian?" Kind of hopefully. And I have to say, oh, sorry, man. No, thanks for the compliment, but I'm from the U.S. Well, and I, I do feel like Toronto has a different class of fan, too. I mean, I, I feel like I know there's a lot of cosplaying everywhere, but I feel like sometimes the the, the cosplay I'm seeing here is epic. And I, I also have to say, I love the fact that you film your cosplayers who come to visit you. <sighs> oh, wow. You just reminded me. I've got to put the pre previous one out. Oh, wow. Um, uh, yeah, because I mean, I'm basically a cosplayer, man. The only difference between an actor and a cosplayer is that, is that I get a script written by someone else that, that probably I get to say stuff that's better than I would have thought of. Uh, but I think the instinct is the same. It's just fun to put a different skin on and walk around in it for a little while. You get to explore a different part of yourself by doing that. Uh, my, one of my favorite things is like watching, like, like I remember this, she must have been like 80, 80 years, 85 years old. This woman in a wheelchair dressed as Wonder Woman, like owning it. Just like, I'm Wonder Woman deal. You know, uh, I thought that was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. That's awesome. Well, you know, the last I'd like to know is what do you, you know, when you're, you're meeting with fans, you know, what do you, what do you hope that, that you get out of it i know the fans are obviously coming there and they're they're getting their moment with you and everything else but what what do you hope you get out of a, a trip to fan expo or anything else i am trying to see that fans are happier as they leave the conversation with me than they were when they came they're pretty happy when they when they come up to me and i'm hoping that i can get them just a little bit happier because i found if i've learned anything it's that when I when I help people, I get happy. I think that's the secret of life. If I, if I can help people or allow them to help me, that gives me happiness. Whereas stuff that I used to chase, which is you know possessions and stuff, that gives me pleasure. But that is a that's a finite time. Like I could buy a toy, I could get pleased for like six days. I could buy a car maybe six weeks before I get used to it. If I buy a house, man, six months and it just fades into the background of normalcy. But if I can connect with people, that makes me abidingly happy. And I, the only way I know how to do it is to help them in some way or allow them to help me. Uh, and frankly, it's easier for me to help people than be helped. I'm working on it. Well, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure chatting. Right on. Really good to talk with you, Andrew.